Eccoci qua, ciao ragazzi, questa sera facciamo un po' di chiacchierata in inglese con eh, un mio grande amico William Daniels che vediamo se si collega. Yes, hi everyone, I see already some foreigner friends and so if William is online, when William came, ciao a tutti ragazzi, sì parliamo di fotografia lo faremo con il grande William Daniels che tra poco si dovrebbe aggiungere. Vediamo se fa richiesta William. Hello William, are you there? Yeah, you have just to ask me to join me. <laughs> yes, William, I can see you. But please, uh, probably you have to join our Instagram live, <laughs> or for sure, so it's, it's too much complicated for me to do everything, the, the <laughs> answer and question, <laughs> or question and answer, yeah. I can say, I can see you. Ok, yeah, let's try again. Ah, ok, let's see. Ok, go live. Here we are, 3, 2, 1. Connection. Ok, yeah. <laughs> super, got it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, don't worry. I was thinking, oh my God, I'll be totally alone for, for three hours uh, to, <laughs> talking about uh, the, the wonderful photography of William Daniel and this atmosphere in the picture and, and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and I was thinking, please, William, join me. <laughs> Here we are. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Okay, no, not bad. I'm really happy to, hear, to be here with you. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, I, I did introduce you, actually, so I want to, to do it now uh, in a simple way. You know, I told you that this, uh, it will be a, an informal conversation and, and, and that's all. Yeah, but of course, we will talk about photography. And first of all, I, I'm happy to meet you here in this strange and, and terrible period. So uh, it is a way in order to stay in contact in a way. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, so guys, uh, William Daniels is a great photographer a, a, and a good friend of mine. And, and we may, ah, yes, but just a second for the toast. Yeah. Here we are. Here we are, first of all, the toast. Cheers. Cheers, my friend. Great. Yeah. Italian white, right? Well, Italian, but on the <laughs> French side of Italy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ah, much better with the red wine. Yeah. And, and uh, just in order to introduce to, uh, to the, my audience, I can say, <laughs> Williams is a great photographer and he works a lot with Nat Gio and a, is a photographer of um, Panos Picture, <clears throat> the agency Panos Picture, but probably later on you can explain us a little bit better your work for Nat Gio, that I love it. And, and um, we met the first time in Berlin, if I remember well, in Berlin in 2016, For, for the Like Oscar Barnack uh, Award Ceremony, I, I was uh, excited and, and we were among the finalists. Yeah, you remember the name, the finalists. <laughs> uh, with Giulio Piscitelli and, uh, and many friends. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, also, um, yeah, and this year, that year won uh, Scarlett Cotton. Yeah, Fra right. A French photographer. A French photographer and and uh, there were also um, another French photographer, a great photographer, Herbeau. Guillaume Herbeau, yes. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. There were many French photographers that year because there was also 
Stéphane Lavoué. Stéphane Lavoué. So, Wonderful pe- with the kingdom. Uh, the project of Stéphane Lavoué was yeah. the kingdom. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, 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 I bought uh, that book, a really thin and simple book, but amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Right. I, I love it. But I bought another book. Yeah, you mm-hmm. know. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, but just in a while. First of all, William, I would like to ask you something about your latest project. Uh, latest project that I saw on Nat Geo um, this month, probably. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Of, um, about coronavirus, right? Yeah, and I've read the article was really strong uh, and so congratulations first of all for the for the work and i read something also about your strange and weird feeling of course with this kind of assignment yeah it was very new and like for i guess anyone on this planet it's something so new that we're experiencing right and as a regular contributor of national geographic when it started i i um i when I start to understand that something's going to happen in France, I, I, I told my editor that uh, I'm here, I'm available if they want me, that it should be very interesting. So I, so they gave me, put me an assignment and then I start to walk in, uh, in Paris uh, using my motorbike and uh, uh, riding around Paris and trying to see what's, what was happening. And the, the first few days was just shooting people like every day, like every place in the world, like people going to supermarkets, and more and more I realized that maybe the, the point of being in Paris is to photograph this famous city because it's a city where a lot of people, a lot of people know Paris. It's, it's, uh, I think this is the most visited, um, per, uh, most visited um, city in the world by tourists, by tourists. Okay. So I thought maybe I should just, which is a very simple idea, maybe I should just visit most of the, um, uh, the very iconic places of Paris and see how I can get something um, with that and it was very yeah very uh, strange very uh, yeah. very uh, weird experience very yes. yeah weird experience. yeah I, I i was overwhelmed uh, looking at the picture of trocadero or 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 some uh, huge mall totally yeah. empty or, or and closed uh, yeah so and but i i've read something also about your a feeling because you said something about the uh, the word that that is not just a, a, a way in order to tell the other people but is about us and you also uh, and so probably I read something on the article where you try to explain your your weird feeling uh, with, with this topic that it, it's involved everyone yeah so you your family and 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 your mm-hmm. friends too so some yeah, things that's, that's definitely something new because i normally don't walk in france so i'm always in the position of someone who visits a place and reports about something that i don't belong to yeah which is which is uh, which is uh, which is great I, I love traveling and i love discover people i love meet new people so um so it's great uh, and but also sometimes it's maybe easier because how can I say that I, we have the excuse of being just a visitor coming from outside, you know. Right. When right. you it was not the first time I was walking in France, but it's very rare. And maybe the the, the first big time I walked in France was uh, five years ago for during the um, terrorist attack, you know. Yeah. Fifteen. I see. I, I, my apartment is very close to. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah, very, very close to um, to the, the different places attacked. Um, oh, my God. So, so I felt very close to the story. And I had the same feeling, which is, it's strange. I'm covering something that affects myself, my family, my friends, my neighborhood. And this is the same for this again. So it's, it's very different than, than being a visitor. You know? Okay. You, you feel like uh, you, you have to find a, a, a nice way to tell this and a smart way to tell this. And you have to find the being able to step back a bit to understand what's happening and to to see it in a different way you know and so it's it's uh, it's not that easy actually and um i see so, so i see i mean i, I cannot but, say it's very complicated to shoot paris when it's empty because it's, it's there's much more complicated things to do of course and uh, yeah but 
Yeah, it's yeah, not it's so not, easy. It's not, it's not to, that easy, actually. Yeah. And to give the atmosphere. But your, your, your pictures are always amazing. And also this reportage, I think, is something uh, strong. Uh, and and we, will put the, the, we will put the links of, your, of this uh, work on, uh, later on on our Facebook page or on, on in a story here in Instagram. So the people can see it or it's quite easy. Coronavirus Paris, Nat Geo, William Daniels, and you can find it immediately. But, but um, about this reportage or different or also other assignment, I'm curious uh, about the, how you can uh, work about it. Uh, do, do you work uh, completely alone or do you organize with some uh, journalist friends or with the writer or your editor? Um, as you already told us, probably told me in, uh, just two minutes ago, in this case, you organized by yourself uh, and this uh, reportage. But usually, uh, could you tell us something about this uh, situation? Yeah. Uh, so usually I walk abroad. So, I, so I, it's always difficult to walk abroad without the help of a local person. So I usually walk with a fixer, like okay. most of uh, reporters. And the work of the fixer is to organize before I come to organize <clears throat> the, the work and to uh, fix appointments and to find uh, the good persons and to organize some schedule um, hmm. uh, and to translate when you're on the ground on the field with him to translate with people and to help you understanding the culture. So because sometimes it's it's not it's not. It's not just because you speak uh, the same language, for example, English, that you understand people. Yeah. You know? So you right. have to help you to filter, to, to understand how people uh, act and what they say, what does that mean and everything. So you need, always need someone local. So, uh, and, and usually most of the time, the quality of your work depends on the quality of this person. So they are very, very important person. We never mention them, but they, I mean, we don't mention them much, but they are definitely very important uh, person. And it's very important to find a good one. Yeah, no, no, you're right, you're right. And, and, and also, I can imagine all around the world, the different fixers. So every time it's something new, the relation with the fixer and, and, yeah. and then the story. And so, yeah. Definitely. Sometimes it can be a very good friend. You became friend and your friend for life. I have some fixers. I, I'm still in touch for 12 years that I met in Kyrgyzstan. We became very good friends, you know. Okay. And if if nice. you don't have the good feeling with the fixer, it's going to be complicated <laughs> because you have to spend three weeks with him, you know. Or yeah. Her. And so, yeah, it's important also. Yeah. <laughs> but I but, I, yeah. I can imagine. But uh, and and regarding the the book and your project, your wonderful work about uh, yeah the Republic uh, Centra Centra Africain, I can I could I can speak uh, French too. We, oui, c'est moi. I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, yeah, no, I, I know that, that for sure you spent a lot of years uh, there. Man, I, you traveled probably many, many times uh, uh, down there. And, and uh, what's happened? Did you uh, have the, always the same? Did you use, in a way, the same fixer or, or different fixer for different areas? So it's, it's, a, it's not a good example because this is probably one of the only places abroad where I didn't work with fixer. For okay. Reasons, because there's no real fix, there's, there's not good fixer. There, there, yeah, there is just a few fixers in, um, in Central African Republic. I see. And uh, because it's a country so, so poor, uh, very small also, so you don't have a lot of um, persons who went to high school and... Um, who, has, uh, who knows journalism, there's just a few journalists. So it's not easy to find fixers. Um, so it's a place where I didn't work much with fixers, uh, but it's also a place where you can very easily have access to people because many people speak French. Okay. I mean, at least the leaders, so the important person, they speak French. And it's so small, so you very easily you get the phone number of a minister or someone or a leader of a group or something, a political leader. So it's quite easy to get in touch with people. So if you have a good driver who can help you translating sometimes with people who don't speak French, okay. uh, you can walk this way. 
you can walk straight. Sometimes I walk with fixers, but never very long because, as I said, it was not the best way to uh, get the walk. Yeah, a little bit hard, stay all yeah. the time. It, it, because a fixer probably is also a kind of filter, and sometimes is great, but uh, sometimes can uh, just a filter uh, between you and, and your subject, right? Yeah, the, the, yeah. So that's why when you have a, I mean, I actually got, I had some very good uh, drivers who walked also as fixer with me because they were helping sometimes, convincing people. I had a, a couple of times I walked with uh, some guys who were a bit famous because they used to play in a national uh, basketball team. I see. Okay. And basketball is a very important sport in South African Republic. So ah. this guy were famous and they were just drivers. I mean, they're drivers working for a security company. And okay. I was I was renting a car from the security company, so I got I got um, I got him to them because two guys were in this situation. They were a famous guy who used to play a basketball in the national team. So actually, when you were meeting some uh, anti balaka, the, the anti balaka there are some uh, um, um, uh, sorry I can't find the, the word. Um, no, don't worry. Some I... fighters, some young fighters, a bit okay. naive, part of uh, fighting groups. And okay. they knew, usually we knew them. So actually they were opening the doors very well because they were just famous. And also because they were a uh, sportman, like in one was like two meters high. So he was okay. very impressive. So he was a, yeah. also act indirectly as a security guard with me. You know? Yeah, well, wonderful. So. You, you remind me when I was in Cuba some years ago, uh, you know that I, I almost live in Cuba, but yeah. some years ago I worked with... Uh, a, a volleyball player and so i i'm <laughs> laughing because i i felt the same yeah something weird and and so tall two hour two two meters and and 15 centimeters yeah but interesting yeah but regarding project that i i would like to yeah you know i i told you that this simple uh, informal I I interview has uh, um, how can i say a simple and easy format uh I would like to, to ask you three questions about, for example, your, your, uh, uh, your favorite uh, uh, reportage that you did, uh, talking about uh, uh, fo photo reportage, you know, and um, I don't know if probably RCA is one of the most important. For sure, the book is amazing, and so, but you, you, you shot so many reportage for Nat Geo, for, for a personal project, different assignments. So um, I don't know if you have just one in, in particular that you want to share with us. Central African Republic was definitely by far the project in which I put the most energy that was the most complicated, the most difficult, the most uh, tiring physically and uh, mentally also. I went 10 times, but always for trips quite long, like for one month, four or five weeks. Okay. It seems short, but uh, in, when you spend four or five weeks traveling in a country, in the countryside with, with very bad, um, in bad conditions and, and it's a bit dangerous and everything, it's, it can be long. It can be very long. And it's a country that is very, uh, it's difficult to keep some hope because it's a country that is at war. I mean, especially when I walk from 2013 to 2016, Okay. It's a country where you I couldn't find any hope, to be honest. And so it's quite, um, it, it's, it's quite, um, it's empty you. I don't know if you, this expression makes sense, you know, it's, no. it's, it makes you very, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. And, uh, so you have to motivate you to keep, keep walking because, you, because it's important. And um, yes. so, so it's definitely a place that, uh, that, uh, yeah. yeah, tired me. Um, yeah, I, I, I remember that you told me something about that, uh, about uh, uh, probably Africa, generally speaking, uh, after so, so many times uh, working there, so many years working there, probably you were tired. Yeah, just cheers. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, 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 it's a pleasure. Um, and so, yeah, okay, so probably, and so I... I I, for this reason, I am much more happy now because I, I have this beautiful book and this is an iconic image uh, 
uh, yeah, it's, it's perfect for, for me because this picture, to me, it can work alone, can work alone. And, and you are a, a, a wonderful storyteller, uh, I, I would say, I want to say, but, but this picture is an iconic image. And, and, and for this reason, I, I've seen, probably for this reason, I've already seen this picture everywhere in, in Perpignan or, or so many uh, places or exhibition or, and also in your books, he, he, she can stay alive alone. What, what do you think about this consideration? No, I, I'm, I'm glad you said that because this is definitely something I'm trying to do, which is um, both uh, telling stories as a photojournalist, as a documentary photographer, but I'm very, very happy when I can make a picture that can stand by itself, can be even removed from the story and have some, some kind of second way of reading, second way of viewing, you know, who has kind of a second life. This is really what I, what I try to do. Uh, and so, um, and this picture is maybe a good example because it's, I realized, not, not when I shot it, because when I shot it, I don't, I don't even re very well remember when I took it, actually. Oh, but really? Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, I mean, I do, I do remember, but it was very, very fast. This guy was walking by the river. Okay. Uh, and I, I mean, sometimes you shoot, I'm, I'm sure you know these feelings, and sometimes you shoot, you're sure that when you shoot this scent, it's going to be a very good picture. Exactly. And you, you don't really know, you're shooting, and, and finally it's like two days later you watch, oh, maybe this one is good. And, <laughs> and one, two, three weeks later, you start to see it more and more, say, yeah, actually maybe this picture is good. Okay. And it's actually only weeks or months later that, that I start to show my picture to friends or colleagues, or maybe I put it on Instagram, I don't remember, that I see the reaction of people, that finally a lot of people find it very strong. And uh, yeah, it yeah. Picture. It took me time to realize it was a strong picture. So, okay. So, so, so it's a bit accidental. I, I would not say accidental, but no, no, I, I got it. Yeah, thank you for the story. It, it, it's something interesting, I think, uh, since often many photographers say, "Okay, it's easy to recognize the best picture ever uh, mm -hmm. during the reportage," but you're right. Often, probably, you can discover. Uh, from your hard drive uh, yeah. weeks I, I, later. Yeah. Definitely. I, have, I have one picture from another big work I did was in Kyrgyzstan and I did the previous book was about Kyrgyzstan. Okay. It's, a, it's a book called Faded Tulips and probably the pictures I, the, the most important for me now it's not in the book because I didn't see it when I did my editing. Could you imagine that? It's only after, wow. a long time after that I went back on the raw files and I found this picture. Oh my God! So, so I so, so, I'm so a, I'm a, I guess I'm a terrible editor with my own work. <laughs> no, <laughs> but it's definitely there are many pictures like this that that I I understand very very late that they, they have this power of standing long. I see. So long time. So you know. Uh, uh, um, so p p please uh, now I'm discovering that you you have to send me this picture since I have also that book. Uh, uh, but probably with, uh, is missing, the, the best picture ever is missing in that project. So I will. Okay, I will. thank you very much. Uh, I, I'll buy it <laughs> for sure. No, great. Uh, and, and, and so, okay. And, and last, another, mm, not main topic, but another uh, stuff. I'm, I'm curious about another thing, about your your not not your favorite photographer you are right it's not so uh, correct say favorite photographer but I if you <laughs> admire someone uh, in this field i mean in this world uh, and uh, i know that it's not so easy because there are a lot of great photographer and mm -hmm. and uh, yeah so many different styles photo styles and and approach but I would like to know maybe just one name, if you can, and if you sure. want. Uh, so when you asked me, I was thinking, because there are many photographers uh, whom who's, uh, like the, 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 the work. And, but one of the best exhibitions I saw in the last two years is exhibition of an Italian photographer, it's Alex Maioli. Um, his, his last work that he's been shooting for the last maybe eight or ten years, I'm not sure. And I think it's called something like the Theatrakilia, Theatricality of life. I'm, I'm not sure I, I say it well in English. 
Okay. But it's, it's very interesting you know. because he makes pictures from um, news, but also from very simple moments in the streets everywhere in the world, and always by using some light that he brings. Yeah. He, flash. He, I guess he, sometimes he uses even several flash and several, uh, right. several, uh, several assistants, I guess, because the light is just always incredible and gives some atmosphere very specific. Right. And we, yeah. were, we were talking about pictures that can be both something that tells a very specific time, but also something that is a piece of art and that, that is, is, um, has its own life, its own existence, its own, as, yeah. as, as a piece itself. And it is, is probably the best example for that because... Yeah, 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 you're right. He has pictures of, I don't know, he has pictures of refugees, uh, refugees um, arriving in Greece, or he has pictures of, um, if I remember well, of just men walking in the street in, in Africa during okay. the day. But the light is so strong that it gives some kind of uh, atmosphere that, that you can have this picture, you can print it and put it on the wall in your place and you will like it every day, is that if you don't know exactly what is this about. Yeah, I yeah. love when a photographer is able to make this. This mysterious inside the picture, yeah. inside the story. Yeah, you're right. But, no, Alex <laughs> Maioli is, is a, a master. Yeah, and... and um, I, I, I think that often she, he, he who use a lot of tripod with uh, lighting, flash, uh, and, uh, or, or assistant, but he, he, he loves uh, work with this uh, tripod and artificial light. Uh, and and the, the final picture is a sort of, uh, yeah. Uh, something so personal, a, a, yeah. a, a personal view so, so, so strong. So, yeah, I uh, agree. Thank you for, for the name of Alex Maioli. Uh, I don't know if you mention him just because you I'm Italian. Italian. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I look for it in forever. No, but we should, we should admit that in Italy you have lots of very good creative photographers who... who um, who bring photography to a new level. I mean, Alex Majoli, Paolo Pellegrin. Uh, um, right, right. I, I've, I have many in mind that, that doesn't come right now, but you have a lot. Yeah. Pa Paolo Verdone, I don't know if... Paolo Verdone, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, from yeah, it's very, very yeah. Cool. And yeah. yourself. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you a lot. So <laughs> cheers, cheers, cheers. <laughs> yeah. Not bad. My wine is Valpolicella. Oh, yeah, uh, I'll send you a bottle. Yes, please. I would but... love to. I, lo I love Italian wine. I'm too nice with Italian right now. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, I really, I really love Italian wine. That's true. I mean, mine is French, but, but I love and, it. And, and, and we, and the specific high, love a lot the French wine too. So, yeah. you know, polite uh, answer. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. Thank you, William. And, and the other, the other uh, thing I'm curious about your now yes i can say favorite book photo book uh, eleanor simon cheers eleanor yeah eleanor <laughs> great and uh, yeah we um the other things is probably your favorite photo book um i mean i know that the same so many great and wonderful photo book, uh, but if you have just to give an advice or if you want to say something about the feeling with just one book, uh, a, a photo book, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, again, I have plenty of books that I really like and, and my, in my place, I, I'm not in my place here, it's uh, because of the lockdown, I, I could, I'm, I'm not, I don't stay in my place. Okay. But I have plenty of books, of course, I'm a big, uh, like many photographers, I'm a big uh, uh, photo book lover. And, but the books that I regularly watch again and again and again, and, and always, I'm always amazed by the book, it's uh, Gypsies uh, by, uh, by Kudelka. Wonderful, yeah. It's so strong. I mean, it has pictures already 50 years old. Yeah, uh, right. It's still, uh, still extremely strong and good and uh, everything. It's yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I really love it. Yeah. I love this book. To totally agree, William. Thank you for mentioning Gypsy. It's something, yeah, Kudelka, another master, but that book is, yeah, yeah. W really it's wonderful. It's very, very original to say, because I I'm sure this is uh, like the, 
preferred book for many documentary photographer, many yeah. reporters. But yeah, don't, very, very don't very mind. Very yeah, for that. don't yeah. mind. It's amazing. Yeah, gypsy is something really great. The the feeling the is so full of empathy with the people. Uh, this yeah. project, right? And and uh, uh, yeah, so many. How can I say environmental portrait? If I remember well, uh, I, I have this book in the Italian version called the Zingari. Is something yeah. Now it's not so easy to find uh, the the not so easy to find the the original version, the first one, probably. In well, English. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, have, I have a recent version. Yeah, I, I bought a recent version a few years ago. So I okay. I, I've never seen. I have never seen the original version. Did, okay. did you see it? Have you seen it? No, no, the original, no. Yeah, I have the the Italian version, but okay, the picture and the editing is the same. And also, I have to say that the quality of the paper uh, yeah. is wonderful. Very much. Nice. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. it is something wonderful. It's with some very dark black, like like carbon. Wow, yeah. yeah. Like carbons. I don't know. I don't know. You say that in English, like coal, charcoal. You know, like very. Dark okay, charcoal. charcoal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Charcoal. Exactly. It's beautiful. A big very contrast, uh, yeah. light and shadow, and this picture inside the home of the gypsies is something really strong. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. So, thank you. Thank you very much for these uh, su suggestions and this uh, this chat too. I I, I know I'm. I, I'm really happy uh, and I hope to meet you soon, William, since uh, uh, <laughs> it's not so easy to stay totally enclosed uh, in this place, even if I'm at home now. You can imagine I, I, I had a, a ticket for Cuba, <laughs> oh. <laughs> so yeah, it's not so... You know that I love that place, and yeah. I, I had to spend one month down there. Uh, but yeah, uh, now yeah, of course now I'm here in Bologna, working a lot and and working with my photo studio, and and uh, yeah, so it's quite hard. But I'm discovering uh, a lot of stuff and things around me, and I'm shooting uh, almost every day. A uh, picture of nothing, but uh, you know the things, uh, the 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 stuffs, uh, or, or, or also the the glasses, or uh, so, yeah. If you look at at the at the things around you with with the a different eyes, a different attitude, everything can can become uh, or can be better or became uh, mm -hmm. something magic in a way. Yeah. Do. Yeah, yeah. And uh, okay, uh, what what's your plan uh, next? I mean, working with or for NetGeo. Um, I, I had this um so just before this um this uh, COVID-19 crisis, I was yeah. about to I've been working on a project with, first with a grant for the National Geographic Society. Okay. That I received uh, in 2018. I was working on a big project on, in, in many uh, communities affected by statelessness around the world. I see. And I was about to go back to the field with this time on assignment for the magazine, the Geographic magazine, to finish this, uh, to complete this project. Okay. So I was about to go to Nepal, to Cambodia, to, uh, to uh, Latvia, maybe even Dominican Republic. Oh, wow! Uh, but then everything was. Uh, yeah, something is changing. So, but, so but I hope I will do that after. Let's see. Let's see how is it going, especially in Asia, in Nepal. I don't know how is it going to, to yeah. be. So. But, yeah, but, but well, when did you uh, won this grant? 2018. In, in 2018, yes. Ah, okay, 2018. Yeah, so it's long period, two years until now. And... Yeah, but I started to shoot only last year because okay. when I got the grant, I was very busy on something else. And I started to shoot only last year. Okay. So I shoot from March 2018. I traveled to four places. Each time three weeks, so it takes some time. Okay. From March 2019 until uh, last fall. And then I went to Washington to, to National wow. Geographic headquarters to show the work and discuss with the photo editors. 
And then it always takes some time for National Geographic to decide how to, how, where to go and how and make budgets and everything. Right. So it, it, was only, uh, it was only recently that I started to get the green light, but then we had this, uh, this thing. So, uh, yeah. But it's not, I mean, it's, 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 not, it's, it's a project that is totally out of, um, non-related to news. So I, I have time. It's not very important. And I, actually, I, I was... I was already. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm. 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 I'm, I'm I spent since the beginning of the crisis. Been already one month now in France. Okay. I've been working for Nagio. So I did this series you mentioned about Paris, but then I traveled to um, okay. east of France, Mulhouse, uh, which uh, was and still a bit uh, one of the most important fla- places for the um, for the um, uh, COVID nineteen uh, epidemic. Okay. So yeah. Like twelve days. There and I came back just a few days ago, and the story is going to be published on Agile website probably uh, uh, Monday, I think. Okay, so I buy it. <laughs> no, on the website. So ah, on the website. So I, I'll see it. <laughs> okay. No, so yes, congratulations, William. Yes, congratulations. I know that it is really difficult to, to join the National Geographic Society. So. Uh, big congratulations for this and for your work. Yeah, I, I, I love your photo style, you know. And, and yeah, whenever we met, uh, I, I, I can say you something about your project and you know that I follow you. And, and, and uh, yeah, so stuff like that. Congratulations. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, no, no, it, it's amazing. And I was so happy to be... And, and honored to be with you and Matt Stewart uh, uh, to be chosen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we were chosen uh, I, like, uh, for, from Leica as ambassador for the yeah. Leica M10. So it was great for me. Yeah, and an honor. Okay. Th- thank you very much, William. I, I, I too. Really. Yeah. O- hope to meet you soon. Looking forward to meeting you. <laughs> And we probably meet in Perpignan. In Perpignan, maybe, maybe. Uh, hope, hope it. Yeah, hope, yeah. yeah. So cheers. Thank you cheers. so much for inviting. It's always a pleasure. To talk Thank to you. you. My my pleasure. Yes. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. So I don't know.